For a staff for our health report, and joining us now is Africa 54 health correspondent Lino Madu with a look at a skin disease with unknown cure. Lino. Thank you, Vincent. Vitiligo is a loss of skin pigment that causes white spots or patches to appear on the skin. For the patients, finding the right treatment is often challenging. So is a stigmatization and the rejection they are often confronted with. Fashion model Chantelle Winnie has taken the fashion world by storm, but the young Canadian model says it wasn't always easy. I submitted my portfolio into um, many agencies in Toronto and I always got response back like, oh yeah, you know, you have a nice body and nice proportions, but we don't know what to do with you. We don't know where to place you, so sorry, but no. Winnie has vitiligo a long-term condition that causes pale, white patches to develop on the skin when the body's pigment-forming cells are destroyed. According to the medical journal JAMA Dermatology, about 0.5% to 2% of people have vitiligo worldwide. Vitiligo is generally considered to be an autoimmune disorder when the immune system attacks the body's own tissues and organs. In people with the condition, the immune system appears to attack the pigment cells, called melanocytes. Medical experts say while vitiligo may be more noticeable in dark-skinned people, it occurs with similar frequency in all ethnic groups. Irene Flores is from Bolivia. In El Alto, there are a lot of people who has it, especially in the lips, in their fingers. So I understand the disease and see it's something normal. But some people, and even some uneducated kids say, why is she like that? What does she have? So it's a little difficult. They think it's contagious. People who suffer from vitiligo can feel stigmatized, distressed, and isolated. For Winnie, modeling opportunities have come her way because, she says, times have changed. Yeah, no, I feel like even the top models right now have a lot of personality, and I feel like that's what people are looking for, you know, something that they can relate to, you know, a real person. So I feel like the industry is very much so opening up, widening their eyes. A number of treatments are available for vitiligo, including drugs, light therapy, and surgery. But experts say there is no medication available to stop it spreading or to prevent it reoccurring. Joining us live via Skype from Detroit, Michigan, for more on vitiligo is Dr. Iltafat Hamzavi, co-chair of the Global Vitiligo Foundation and a specialist with the Henry Ford Hospital Department of Dermatology. Dr. Hamzavi, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you for having me. Nice to be here. Help us to understand this condition. What causes vitiligo? Are some people more... Uh, susceptible to developing it versus others? Yeah, so vitiligo, as your segment suggested, is an autoimmune disease, and families that tend to have other autoimmune diseases tend to have vitiligo more commonly found in their family members. Um, so if you have an autoimmune disease like hypothyroidism, uh, some forms of lupus, some forms of eczema, your risk of vitiligo goes up. So if someone is aware of the risk, is there a way to prevent it from developing at all? Not to our knowledge, um, just like any other autoimmune disease, stress and diet may play a role. Um, taking certain medications may make it worse, but really we don't have a clear idea of what the trigger is. So we don't know the trigger, but could it be also the environment? You talked about stress and other things, but what about the environment? What about uh, lifestyle? So we've been looking at vitiligo and many centers throughout the world are trying to figure out are there regional variations? And when we can have very strong epidemiologic studies, we can answer that question, but today we can't. So when someone sees a patch on their skin, the white patch, how much time does it take typically to develop into full-blown vitiligo? Because we see that there are some people who have it more spread on their body, and other people, it's, it's maybe in just some specific spots. Right, so it varies. So some people can have vitiligo, they get one spot and it never progresses beyond that one spot. Other people can have a spot and it rapidly progresses to other parts of the body. One thing we do know is that if you treat vitiligo early, you can have a much better response and you can have a normal level of skin pigmentation the more aggressive you are in the early phases. So we know we can stop progression in most patients. 
But at the same time, the natural course of the disease is that maybe about 10 to 50 percent of people have a spot that doesn't progress, and maybe another 10 to 50 percent of people, and that's an approximation, it's not an exact number, will end up with progressive vitiligo. Now, the ones that are progressive obviously have a much more difficult condition because the body keeps changing appearance. So when we talk about treatment to address it, perhaps preventing it from spreading further, what are we looking at in terms of what you guys, pro, pro, uh, what is available in your practice, for example? Um, so within our practice, and Henry Ford Hospital um, is a very active, large vitiligo system with a lot of research as well as clinical trials and patient care. And the members of the Global Vitiligo Foundation can offer some top-notch care that not all centers do have, but throughout the world, you can do two things. You, number one, you can stabilize disease. Number two, you can repigment, and they're two separate processes. So stabilization can range from using a topical cream. It can involve the use of light treatments. It can involve the use of oral medications that suppress the immune system. You can also repigment using light treatments and some of those creams as well, as well as surgical treatments where you take small samples of skin, extract the color and skin cells, and place them back on the recipient sites. So we have two techniques, and again, they're effective, especially in the early phases. And in clinical research, we have many more advances coming up in the next few years. But after the, uh, a patient goes through different treatments uh, available according to their needs, what are the chances of vitiligo resurfacing, developing again? So it's always present. Uh, you can never say you can cure vitiligo, which some people say that there's nothing that we can do. So we can't cure the treatment, the condition. I can't give you one thing that will solve your condition for the rest of your life. But I can work very hard with you to preserve the pigment that you do have and then repigment the color that you've lost. Um, but you do have to undergo treatment. Now, about a quarter of patients will respond to treatment and they'll never have it again. And if you're a surgical candidate, you have a specific type of vitiligo. In those patients, you can potentially put them into permanent remission where they don't have to come back. Um, but each patient's a little different. And so in general, you can't cure all people, but you can improve a vast majority of them. And there are some people who can go into permanent remission, but you can never say cure right now because we can't reverse the underlying pathology yet. So then uh, before we end, give us some uh, basic steps for someone who just sees a white patch on their skin and they're thinking I may have vitiligo, what do you suggest they do? So number one, go see your doctor. Um, and if they can see a dermatologist, even better and assess whether or not it is truly vitiligo. There are a few tests that we can do with black lights and some blood tests to assess that or a skin biopsy. Now, if you do have vitiligo, treat early and don't give up because the treatments do work, but they take a long time to work. And so it may be three to six months up to a year of treatment, but you can have significant improvement in that. Secondly, the social psychological elements have to be addressed in the beginning. So if you're in a culture that really has a challenge with pigment and its appearance, start to address those areas early. But treat early, have a physician evaluate you, and then we can get you in a good course of treatment. Early intervention is key. Dr. Amzavi, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Sure. And that was Dr. Eltefat Hamzavi. He is co-chair of the Global Vitaligo Foundation and a specialist with the Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, Michigan. Now, there's a glimmer of hope in the fight against the HIV AIDS virus. The, a new vaccine has produced a favorable immune system response during a trial on nearly 400 people. VOA correspondent Mariama Diallo has details from the recent study published in the Lancet Medical Journal. Around 37 million people are living with HIV and AIDS with 1.8 million new infections and a million deaths each year, according to the World Health Organization. But trials for a new AIDS vaccine has shown robust immune responses in rhesus monkeys and humans. Dan Baruch is among the principal investigators of the study. This study is now testing whether this vaccine indeed protects humans against acquisition of HIV infection. That phase began in November in Southern Africa, where 2,600 at-risk young women are being tested. While there are many different vaccine candidates that have been tested in the laboratory and animal models and even small-scale human studies, very few have reached the point of testing of an efficacy trial. 
HIV has infected around 80 million people worldwide since it was first detected in the 1980s. A safe and effective vaccine will represent a huge breakthrough. So we're pleased with the results so far, but we're cautiously optimistic uh, because we will not know whether this vaccine works in humans until this next study is done. The first interim data from the phase two study is expected in 2021. Mariama Diallo, VOA News.